Why you're tired, weak, and unmotivated. Today we're gonna to talk about the nine ways that low testosterone can have an impact on our overall physiologic health and present with symptoms that are often misdiagnosed because there's a great misunderstanding about what testosterone does in the body and its vast impacts across our metabolism, cell function, and even neurologic health. It's well recognized that one of the symptoms of low testosterone levels is fatigue, but what's often not explained is why. So testosterone levels are tightly correlated with mitochondrial function. The mitochondria, as everyone knows, are the powerhouse of the cell, but on a deeper level, they're required for ATP synthesis. There's an important gene in the mitochondria called PGC1A, and this is what is, regulates mitochondrial biogenesis or the creation of new mitochondria. So the more mitochondria we have and the healthier they are, the more energy that we can produce from the food that we eat and the better that we can feel. So when mitochondria are functioning properly, we have plenty of energy and we don't feel that fatigue. When testosterone levels decline, this gene is downregulated and mitochondria don't go through biogenesis or the replication or division of new mitochondria. And also the mitochondria that we do have become less efficient at oxidative phosphorylation, a part of the electron transport chain, and in producing new ATP. So if patients are seeing that their fatigue is increasing regardless of how much sleep they get or how good their morning routine is or all the supplements that they're taking and they haven't checked their hormone levels, one of the things that can be regulating or causing this fatigue is mitochondrial dysfunction driven by low testosterone levels. Another symptom of low testosterone levels can be decreased motivation, depression, cognitive fatigue, or the lack of want in life, the lack of success, the lack of pushing towards your goals. But why does this occur? Testosterone has a correlation or an ability to cause dopamine in the brain to be heightened or to be able to be more sensitive to the receptors that it's attaching to. Primarily, this is found in the prefrontal cortex or the mesolimbic area of the brain. These two areas are directly able to influence the way that we work in our lives, the way that we pursue goals, the way that we feel reward or success from accomplishment. And when testosterone levels are low, dopamine sensitivity in the brain can be downregulated, and so we don't feel as good, we don't feel as motivated, you don't wake up with that vigor, drive, vitality that you once did, and often low testosterone levels cause decreased psychological energy or you notice that you're not getting the same satisfaction out of things that you used to. And this can be an early sign and symptom that is often misdiagnosed. I've seen many patients to where they're feeling off and they're often told that this is normal with age or that they're feeling the cognitive fatigue or possibly even depressive symptoms. And it's chalked up to depression and serotonin when in reality, it's actually dopamine and testosterone. So that would be another reason why it's important to have optimized testosterone levels because psychologically, it can improve motivation, reward seeking, and the feeling of success and happiness that you get from the accomplishments that you achieve in your life. The next symptom of low testosterone that's often overlooked is the decreased ability to respond to resistance training and protein consumption meaning that we're not recovering from our workouts as well as we once did. We're not able to retain and put on muscle like we once did. And regardless of our diet or our training intensity, we can't keep that muscle. So testosterone is directly related to increasing mTOR. mTOR is a signal for the body to take protein and turn it into muscle. It's also correlated with IGF-1, which is the downstream metabolite of growth hormone and is very important for improving anabolism in the body and specifically in the muscles. So what I notice a lot in patients who have low testosterone levels, who haven't gotten them checked yet, is that they're working out, but they're not able to recover from their workouts. Their fatigue or their DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness is lasting for days and they're not feeling like whatever they do that they can't put on the muscle. So low testosterone levels do cause decreased exercise performance. And that's why when testosterone levels are optimized, we can put on muscle more quickly and retain it and are able to recover from the workouts significantly more efficiently because of its relation to mTOR and IGF-1. Decreased testosterone can also affect our blood glucose levels. We're seeing a lot today in metabolic disease and with the advent of GLP-1 agonists, this is starting to turn back in that people are losing weight and they're able to 
regulate their blood glucose levels more efficiently and not become pre-diabetics or diabetics. But what's often overlooked is if somebody has low testosterone levels, they may be less efficient at utilizing the glucose in the blood. When glucose is in the blood, it requires a receptor on the cells to be able to be expressed for the glucose to be taken from the blood into the cell and then utilized to produce energy. One of these is called GLUT4. GLUT4 is often expressed during exercise, but it's also regulated in part by testosterone levels. So when testosterone levels are low, this receptor is less likely to be expressed and glucose levels in the blood can stay high. This can have the problematic effects of becoming oxidized, damaging the arterial walls and possibly predisposing cardiovascular disease or having some of the other impacts that diabetes can have. So another reason why we wanna make sure that testosterone levels are optimized is because of its impact on glucose levels in the blood and expressing that GLUT4 and also helping to improve insulin sensitivity. Overall, this will also help with nutrient partitioning into the muscles and improving overall exercise performance and lean body mass because when high levels of glucose are in the blood for too long a period of a time, we can become insulin insensitive and then this can lead to increases in adipose tissue and weight gain. To expand on that last point, another way that low testosterone levels can be clinically impactful and negative on our health is that it can control the distribution of fat in the body. What does that mean? Low testosterone levels are often correlated with increases in abdominal fat. So patients who have lower testosterone levels tend to notice that beer gut or that fat that's accumulating around the visceral organs. This is especially dangerous because visceral fat is metabolically active and can be pathogenic, meaning that it can have a very negative impact on the body. This is due to the fact that visceral fat accumulation increases pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, which can lead to systemic inflammation and other problems with metabolism. So when testosterone levels are higher, the hormone sensitive lipase in the fat tends to be increased, which means that we burn more fat and have a more favorable lean body mass. And when testosterone levels are low, we tend to get an accumulation of this visceral body fat, which can again be very problematic to metabolic health. Another important aspect of testosterone in the body is that it can directly induce hematopoiesis, meaning the formation of new blood cells. And it does this by stimulating what's called erythropoietin. Erythropoietin goes to the bone marrow and tells the bone marrow to pr produce more red blood cells. This is why when testosterone levels are too high, we see a red blood cell count get slightly elevated and we may do, need to do things to reduce it. Conversely, low testosterone levels can cause a low red blood cell count. This is very problematic in that red blood cells are required to deliver oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. And so patients who have chronically low testosterone levels may become anemic. Some symptoms of this may be fatigue on exertion, climbing stairs and you're out of breath, or you go to a place of higher elevation and you can't catch your breath, or exercise that you used to do is seeming to be significantly harder than it once was. And this may be because the red blood cells aren't there to be able to take oxygen from what we're breathing to the rest of the tissues and there is becoming hypoxia in these tissues which in severe cases can be very problematic another symptom of a low red blood cell count or anemia can be syncope or lightheadedness or fainting more often so just another point in which that testosterone is vital for exercise performance and delivering oxygen through its influence on hematopoiesis in the body there's also some data to support that low testosterone levels can impact our sleep cycles. It can influence our deep sleep and REM sleep, which are the two restorative sleep cycles that are important for cognitive function, for remembering what we did that day, and for the body to recover from whatever stressors it was put under. This can lead to a vicious cycle. Interestingly, poor sleep is also correlated with low testosterone. So it's kind of a chicken and the egg effect in that if you have poor sleep, your testosterone levels can decline. And if you have decreased testosterone, your sleep can be impacted. So it's important for patients to take note of their sleep. Many people have poor sleep today because of the environments that we live in, because of the caffeine consumption, because of the blue light, or because of watching Netflix too late into the night. Whatever it may be, it's important to note that patients with low testosterone levels tend to notice poor sleep or less restorative sleep than they once were. They're wake up in, waking up in the morning feeling more fatigue, or they don't feel, no matter how much sleep they get, that they have that energy that they should upon waking. Testosterone also has a relationship with our immune system. The immune system is very important in that if it's 
down-regulated to an extent that we can't fight off any pathogens that we're experiencing, but if it's overactive, we can have systemic inflammation and in certain cases, autoimmune disease. So testosterone has a modulatory effect on the immune system where it can down-regulate some of the pro-inflammatory immune cells such as nuclear factor kappa beta or NFKB. So reducing systemic inflammation and also promoting immune cells that are important for the modulation or the reduction in inflammation called T-regulatory cells. And these cells also help to monitor the body for any infection so we can have improved immune function and decreased inflammation with optimal testosterone levels. That's another thing to note is that when patients are experiencing low testosterone levels, they may be noticing that they're more sick more frequently and that the sicknesses don't resolve as fast as they once did when they were younger. And in certain scenarios, having optimal testosterone can significantly improve their immune function and immune defense. And the last symptom of low testosterone is sexual dysfunction. Testosterone is vital for nitric oxide production throughout the body and in the penile tissue. So this is what allows the vessels to dilate and blood flow to occur. This can help in sexual intercourse, and it can also help in the gym to partition more oxygen and nutrients to the muscles. So patients will start to notice, and it's one of the more common symptoms off the bat, is that they are incapable of maintaining erection or achieving erection, or they're losing a sensitivity in that area with the low testosterone levels. And that's often when patients start to seek help. But all of the previous noted symptoms can occur along with the sexual dysfunction or in isolation, and they may be slowly perpetuating over time. So it's very important to look for these symptoms and get your testosterone levels checked. So if you feel unmotivated, weak, or you don't have the strength that you once did, or you're noticing any of the fatigue, sexual dysfunction, or any of the symptoms talked about in this video, it's important to make sure that your testosterone levels are within range. Not only that, but to make sure that you're checking your estrogen, your sex hormone binding globulin, your complete blood count, your complete metabolic panel, your lipid panel, and getting a full perspective on what's going on inside. Often we can see problems arise long before that the clinical symptoms occur and are noticeable to the person. And a lot of these problems could be stopped in their tracks. Specifically talking about testosterone, we'll start to see the decline long before the symptoms occur, or if the symptoms are occurring, it's hard for patients to notice and attribute those to low testosterone. So if you're in Washington state and you're interested in getting a consultation for low testosterone or possibly going on testosterone replacement therapy, we have an office here in Bellevue where we run lab work and we do have patients go on testosterone replacement therapy where we have close monitoring and optimization, not only with that, but overall health. If you're more interested in just knowing if you have low testosterone levels, we have put together a lab shop on our website that you can click the link below where you can actually pay for and order the tests. You'll get a requisition. And as long as you have a lab corp location near you, you can go and get those tests done to see your full organ health and also your testosterone levels and the other sex hormones that are associated. If you're in Washington and you get that test done and you'd like help, inter help interpreting it, or would be interested in getting on testosterone optimization or testosterone replacement therapy, you can come see us here. If you're throughout the rest of the country, you'd have to travel to Washington, but you can still get those tests done as long as you have a LabCorp location near you. So if this video is interesting, like, subscribe, and leave any comments down below if you have any questions about the program or anything that we didn't talk about in this video, and we can make another one for you.